Back in late summer of 2003, I was coming up with some ideas of what would become Fright Rags. And I know I wanted to do shirts, I knew I wanted them to be horror, but I wasn't sure what to do yet. Then I came up with this idea, what would Jason do? This was back when the whole craze of what would Jesus do was everywhere, on bumper stickers and t-shirts and everything, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny to do something called what would Jason do? And instead of the word Jesus, I would just put a hockey mask. So when I launched Fright Rags on Labor Day weekend that year, that was the first design to ever be released. So in late November 2005, I received an email from New Line Studios. It was a cease and desist letter from their lawyers saying I could no longer sell the What Would Jason Do design because it infringed on their copyrights. Damn, I was caught. <laughs> um, not that I didn't expect that, I'd actually reached out to them for licensing prior to that and I really felt that this design was okay because it was a parody. And I did write them back saying that I would remove all trademarks and all infringing aspects of the design if I could continue to sell it. So I went to work and I took out the triangles and I took out the shape of the mask and I changed the eye holes and how many vent holes were in the mask. Everything they listed as their trademark, I took out. With an all new design, I felt like I had the essence of what made What Would Jason Do funny and interesting without their trademarks. And I actually sent them the image for their approval to which they said, yes, you could use that as long as you don't call it Friday the 13th, which I never did anyway. So I immediately put the shirt back up on my website with the revised design, and it actually sold really well. In fact, two days after that, Hot Topic approached me and ended up ordering a test order for their stores, and we would go on to sell over 8,000 of them in the year 2006. Since then, it's remained one of our most popular designs on our website. In fact, Judah Friedlander wore it on an episode of 30 Rock back in 2009, which made sales skyrocket right after the show aired and kept going for a while afterward. Admittedly, in recent years, sales have dropped off for that particular design. In fact, a lot of other people have taken that idea and done their own thing with it, some of which I actually like better than my original idea. However, I'm really proud to be bringing this back on our 15th anniversary. I mean, I look at this design and how simple it is. It's effective, but it's really simple. It's white on black. And that's where I started. And to look at where we've gone over the last 15 years, these crazy designs and colors and things that honestly, I don't think could have been done 15 years ago on t-shirts and we're pushing the envelope every day and trying to do new and different things. And it all started from this one simple design. And it's still what keeps me going day in, day out. No matter how complex the prints and the colors get, I always want it to be extremely effective. And this is a prime example of why I started this company.